I threw a mirror in the ocean to see all that I want to see. A major force in my head, reflections. I caught a heart on the seven seas, filled with these memories. I let it go. So Jen Hudman, who was Jen Hudman in high school, um, I was someone who was always involved in a lot of things. So I loved to play sports. So I played volleyball and softball. Those were my main sports. Um, I did really good in school. I wasn't really a child that had to study to do well. I just was naturally good at school. Um, I was the kind of person that even though I played sports and did after school activities, I still had a job because I like to make money. On the weekends, I would go and do modeling classes and, you know, because that's ultimately what I wanted to do. My dream was to become a fashion model. Um, at around 17, I realized that wasn't going to happen because I wasn't growing any taller. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my ultimate dream. But um, at this point in my life, I'm very thankful that that wasn't the path. Um, of my of my life because of the life that I live now. So growing up, my family, we were pretty much middle to an average income family. Um, my dad worked a lot, he did construction. It was really contract work, so he was gone a lot working and was just really my mom and my sister and I and um, just, you know, really trying to make ends meet. It wasn't like we had life of luxury or anything like that, um, just really simple. I remember growing up as, as a child, like we were very happy kids. We didn't know that we didn't have money. Uh, we just had a lot of fun playing outside, you know. So my parents were divorced when I was around 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old, and my mom got remarried to another man, and he was someone who worked in the oil business. Um, not oil like he striked oil, <laughs> but he worked at the oil fields and the refineries for Shell. And uh, he had two daughters, so I got two stepsisters when my, my mom remarried. Um, and same thing, you know, we were really just, you know, just an average family and uh, no crazy vacations for us. Vacation as a family was going camping, so that's pretty much how things were. We didn't have a lot of money for extras, uh, but I, I feel like my childhood was a very happy childhood. Uh, we had the things that we needed. We had a you know, in warm, comfortable home, and we had food, and we got to play outside all the time. So what kid doesn't want that? You know, we grew up where we had a lot of land. Um, when I say a lot of land, I mean like two acres. So we had horses and animals. I went to college for about two weeks <laughs> because college for me was one, I just was bored. You know, I really wanted to just make money. So um, when I went to college very quickly, I was like, this is not for me right now. I just wasn't at that phase in my life where I wanted to be in school. I just wanted to make money, you know, because growing up, I didn't come from a lot of money. So I always had a job to make money. Um, so I just had random jobs, you know, at one point I remember I had like seven different jobs one year, I think it was 1999. Um, I just always wanted to work, was trying to do different things to be able to make money. So you know, I didn't go to college, just went to work pretty much right after high school. My first real corporate job or corporate career was working for a company called Oakwood Apartments. I got into uh, property management, leasing apartments, and I was interested in that job position because I, I had some friends that were doing that business and they were making a lot of money so that was very intriguing so I started leasing apartments in Houston which is where I'm from where I grew up and I started working with that company and was with them for about a year was very excited about the position because eventually I wanted to get out to Los Angeles which is you know I'm thinking Hollywood career so I did eventually move with the leasing company to Los Angeles so I made a very easy transition from Houston to Los Angeles because I had a place to live because I lived on property and um, you know I knew the area where I was going to be it was a nice community so I was just really all set up it made it very easy for me to make that transition from Texas to California so I moved out to LA when I was 21 years old 
and I went out there to pursue the Hollywood dream. You know, I wanted to go out there because I was doing acting and modeling and I thought that that was, you know, going to be my career and that was like my dream, what I wanted to pursue. Um, so I went out to LA and uh, I tried that for a while. For about a year and a half, I actively pursued a career in the entertainment business. So I was meeting with my agent and getting you know, jobs here and there, doing modeling and acting. And I found out pretty quickly that that was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life because I felt like the business did not model what I wanted for the rest of my life and how I wanted to live my life. Um, I, you know, I was really, you know, like I hope there's something else out there for me. So thankfully I got recruited to the insurance industry. You know, I met a couple that was in the business and, you know, I was very intrigued by them because I could see that they were doing well and they were making good money. So I got involved in the business and that's actually where I met Patrick. I met Patrick at my very first training class when I went in. And I went in and I saw Patrick and he was there with his girlfriend at the time, who's a very sweet girl. Um, you know, I actually met her first and you know, she introduced me to him and um, there was a, an instant, like you could see from Patrick, like this instant charm, you know, like he just lit up the room. When I met him, I was like, that guy is really cool. I really like that guy, you know? So we became very good friends. Um, and you know, f years went by with you know our relationship and the way that um, you know we really cared about each other and each other's success. So the way that it kind of transpired is um, Patrick had an office in the other side of town. You know, I had run I'm running my own office. I was a broker at a team of agents that I was working with, and. I was doing very well. I was making six figures at the time. I was around 26 years old. And, you know, Patrick worked across town. He had his team, he had his office, you know, and he would sometimes come over to my office and visit with me. And I remember him telling me that, you know, one of the things that really attracted to me, me to you, Jen, was like when I would come to your office and I would see you walking around, you would always be walking in a hurry. You were like walking fast. And I was, he's like, you never really had time to like stop and chit chat with me. And I said, you know, you're, you're right because I was always so focused on my next appointment, my next client, my next, you know, agent that I was going to sit down with because I was always thinking about growing, moving, you know, getting my business to the next level. So he's like, I really liked that about you. And it wasn't like I was trying to be like hard to get. It's just who I was naturally because that that was just me. I was always like in a hurry, you know, going somewhere, trying to make something or meet my next, you know, client or or recruit or agent in the business. So he's like, I was really attracted to you because of who you were. He, I could see that you weren't like the type to get involved in all the gossip and the drama that happens in some offices sometimes. It was like, you know, I was like a horse at the horse races with the blinders on, you know, like I wasn't paying attention to all that that was going around me. I just really wanted to be successful and I wasn't really gonna allow anything else to get in my way. So he was like, that's one of the things that I loved about you. So, so that's kind of my, how I got started in the business, how I met Pat and how I attracted Patrick, you know, as a spouse, because some people may ask like, you know, how is it that you attract a guy like Pat? Cause he's not a normal person, right? So I was just being me as I just mentioned who I was, like I was successful too. I was driven, I was ambitious, I was hungry. I was like someone who was so determined with having success in my life that he saw that in me and he was attracted to that as well. I would say that a defining moment for me when I was 21 years old and I made that move from Houston, Texas to Los Angeles, California, a single girl moving from one state to another, not knowing anyone. When I moved out to LA, the first year and a half that I was there, it was pretty lonely. You know, I didn't know a lot of people there. I didn't really know anyone. You know, I just you know people that I worked with. So even on the holidays, I remember it was Easter one year and I remember being alone 
and no one was around, no family and really no friends. And I was sitting at the pool by myself having a conversation with my mom, you know, and just saying, you know, miss you guys and, you know, wish I could spend the day with you. But that wasn't an option for me. So I think because I had to go through that time of loneliness, that it made me go out and search for something. I didn't have distractions of you know other things that were happening, so it made me go out and just get to work. So that's where I was thinking, you know, I'm just gonna go out there. I came out here to LA to do something great, you know, to go find opportunities, to go out and win. So I think that was definitely a big moment for me in my life because if I didn't do that, if I just stayed in Houston, just continue to do the same thing, I definitely wouldn't be the person that I am today. So certainly was a defining moment for me. When Pat and I first met, um, you know, like I said, he was dating someone else. I was dating someone else as well. Um, there was always a, a complete respect for each other, friendship. Um, and you know, years later, you know, after neither one of our relationships worked out, um, that's when things started happening for us because Patrick was someone that I always really admired him, really, really had deep respect for him, admiration, really looked up to him. If there's anyone that I wanted to learn from, it was Patrick. And I actually remember there was an event that we went to. This is like the event, the event where like things started to happen. And on my way to the event, I'm driving to the event, it's in Palm Springs. And I said, you know, at this event, I really want to spend time with Patrick. I really just want to be around him. I want to like learn from him and to spend time with him, you know? So at the event, sure enough, that, that's what happened, you know? And I don't know if it's cause like he liked me and I didn't really know he, that he liked me that way. You know, I didn't know that he was attracted to me other than just a friendship. So we spend time together at the event the whole time and we're both single at this point. And it was so weird. It's like, this is the first time that we ever had like this, like romantic attraction towards each other. Um, at least that's, you know, from what I know from, from him and from myself, you know, because we, neither of us were ever single. Um, but it was just really cool to have that feeling. Like, it was like, it was like almost like we were just like young kids, you know, and like just the conversations that we had and, he was really interested in if I was dating anyone at the time. I'm like, no, I'm not dating anyone. I don't want to date anyone at this time. I'm really good with my life, you know, because I had been broken up with this guy that I was with for a while, like about a year. So I was single for about a year. So I felt like I was in a really good place in my life and I didn't want to have distractions like with dating and stuff like that. I just really wanted to focus on my business. And so sure enough, the whole time at the event, you know, we're spending time together. And then on the way back, you know, we actually drive home together because Palm Springs, Los Angeles, it's only a couple hours away. So I ride home with him. And then the next day, it's a Sunday, we rest. And then on Monday, he calls me and he's like, hey, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, well, of course I'm making phone calls with my team. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know that. But what about after that? And I'm like, nothing. He's like, all right, well, you want to go um, catch dinner? And I'm like, sure, sure. So we meet up that night. This is at Jerry's Deli in Encino, California. And, you know, we're sitting there the whole time and having conversation and I'm just taking notes, asking him lots of questions because I'm trying to learn from him. I'm trying to get the nuggets, you know? Um, so after like a couple hours, he says, you know, do you know why I asked you to come here? And I said, no, no, I, I mean, we're just having, you know, hanging out as friends. And he's like, no, no. He's like, um, you know, I think you like me and I like you. So he's like, I think we should go on a real date. And I was like really surprised when he said that to me because I was just like, this is so weird. He's like, I was like, you're such a good friend of mine. I felt like if I date you and you're my friend and this doesn't work out, then I'm gonna lose him. So that's what my initial reaction was. I was really scared. I was certainly scared of dating Patrick because one, because I knew Patrick's very serious. Like, you know, it's like no playing around, you know? So I wasn't quite sure if I was really ready for that. Um, so he's, he has, his side of the story will be like, oh, she just got up and left right then. But no, it took me like, you know, a little bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, you know, we leave, cause it's late at that point. And it was Christmas time. So the next day I went to go visit my, my family in Texas. 
and um, I remember thinking about him and I was telling my good friend at the time, I'm like, man, there's this guy, Patrick, you know, and I was just like, I think I really like him, you know, and she, I showed him his, you know, showed her his picture and she's like, just go for it, just go for it. I remember her encouraging me. This is my friend Jenny um, in Houston and um, I was like, but I'm scared, I'm scared, scared to date him, you know, and she's like, well, just, just go for it. So I messaged him on, this was back, you know, when we had MySpace. Uh, I messaged him on MySpace and I said, um, you know, I really care about you and I really appreciate you and I really appreciate our, appreciate our friendship and I just feel like I'm not in a place right now to be in a serious relationship. So that's the only reason why I say let's, you know, not date each other. So he messaged me back saying, you know, well, other than losing the friendship with me, what other concerns do you have about dating me? And I don't think I messaged him back for a little while and I was like, you know, really, I just, I don't really have any other concerns. I'm just, I'm just really worried about that. And he's like, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna call you tonight. So it was Christmas Eve, this is 2007. And he called me that night and we talked on the phone for hours, you know, it's probably like five hours straight, we're just on the phone. And then the next couple of nights was the same thing, the same type of conversation. So this went on for about three days, cause I was still in Texas, he's in California. And then, you know, finally I go back to California, it was December 29th and he's like, well, I'm like, you know, let's go on a real day, you know? Cause in the conversations we were having, we were talking about like what's important to us, like, you know, with values and principles and those sort of things. And I was thinking to myself, like, this guy is really great guy. Like, what am I scared of? So I said, okay, let's do this. Let's go on a real date. And I remember our first date was at P.F. Chang's. It was Saturday night, December 29th, 07. When I got there and he was sitting at the table and he looked at me and he gave me this like huge smile and I got like all these butterflies in my stomach and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm never gonna forget that feeling and how awesome it was. And I was just so like giddy and nervous and anxious that was really, really happy, you know. So of course, you know, we talked all night and pretty much closed the restaurant down like we always do with everything. I think initially it could have been intimidating for me. And I think that's maybe why, you know, I was like scared. I was scared to, to date him because, you know, you know, I know that Patrick can lose his temper pretty quickly. So maybe that was a part of some of the hesitation initially, um, but ultimately it worked out. The second date, okay, so second date. So what happened on our second date is Patrick invited me over to uh, his dad's house to have breakfast. His dad cooked breakfast for us. Um, and then uh, we went to church and we had a great time. He introduced me to one of our favorite, my favorite church I've ever been to in my life, he introduced me to. And then after church, we went to Santa Monica and we did the stairs in Santa Monica. And then I took him to my favorite restaurant to have lunch or the cafe in um, Santa Monica as well. And then we went to Third Street Promenade, and then we went into a bookstore, and he went and got a book, and it was just Borders Bookstore, and he said, I'm gonna give you this book. He said, but don't think I'm weird for giving you this book. I just wanna give you this book because, you know, I want you to figure out what you want. So the book was 101 Questions You Ask Before You Get Engaged. We went through the book. It took us about six hours. We literally like just sat down and went through all the questions. We went through the through the book, and I remember we listened to Drew Hill for like six hours straight. We listened to the CD just on repeat, and um, you know what we found is that the important things were oh, like we are we're on the same page. You know what I mean? Like the important stuff that really really mattered to us, we were on the same page. And Patrick kind of joked at the time, like after, you know, we finished going through the book and everything, he was like, all right, we can basically get, get married now. So, I mean, he was joking around, you know, kidding. So he thought that I would probably be taken back by him giving me that book on our second date. But <clears throat> I actually really appreciated his approach, you know, because I appreciated that he was not trying to play around like he really was confident in what he wanted you know in a partner and 
I could appreciate that because I was at a place in my life as well that, you know, I was also looking for that same thing. So I was really thankful that, you know, he was that type of guy, you know, because he was really looking for a woman to marry and to build a life with. And But um, that, you know, happened, you know, 18 months later. Um, so really he wasn't joking. So it was about, let's see, one year and three months. So we dated for about one year and three months, then we got engaged. Um, during that time, there was a lot of turmoil because we were in our old company and a lot of things were happening at that company that Patrick wasn't happy with. And so there was a lot of like, you know, heated discussions and fights and, you know, things like that behind closed doors. It was never with me, it was always with, you know, other people. Um, so there was a lot of like, uh, things that Patrick was going through at the time um, during our courtship and he was just trying to figure out what is my next move because he knew he wasn't happy with where he was at so he was like dealing with things in his head because he's like I want to make the next move of my life so that that was going on during the time of us dating right before we got engaged and actually the day that we got engaged he got into a huge fight with someone we literally got home from our engagement dinner and he's like shut the door to his room he's like having a fight with someone arguing and i'm just like sitting on the couch at his dad's house like like what's happening but uh but yeah those were like things that he was going through during that time for me like i always told patrick you know whatever it is that you decide i'm going to follow you and i'm going to support you so I just want to be there for you during this time. So I just, that's pretty much what, you know, how I was able to support him in the decision. Whatever he, I told him, just whatever you decide, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> so you just let me know where we're going, what we're doing, and I'm right there. So Patrick and I got married, and then three months later, we left from the old company and we started PHP. We started a new company. So um, there was a lot of, you know, hectic times, you know, uncertainty. Um, for me, there was just fear and anxiety, but I said, hey, this is the decision that he's made and I'm going to support him with that. So there was a lot of like, you know, hurtful times, you know, for, for myself and for him too, because we were going through a lot of emotions because not only were we leaving a company, but we were leaving, leaving a lot of friendships and relationships behind as well. So that was really tough for, for both of us. What's it like being married to Patrick? Um, so this is my number one question that I get from people. And it's kind of a loaded question because there's so much to talk about. <laughs> Patrick is a very hands-on person. Um, he likes to be involved. You know, he likes to uh, be included in everything. I mean, to give you an example, like things with our kids at school. You know, if it's parent-teacher conference or events taking place or there's some kind of special event happening, he wants to be there. He wants to know about it. He wants to be involved. He wants to be on the call. He wants to. So he's very, very much um, involved with our kids and. The, our family, he's a very hands-on guy, and I'm truly blessed that, that he's like that. Um, next is he's spontaneous. He is the most spontaneous person I've ever met. I remember when we first started dating, when we were dating just like a couple months, and it was my birthday, and he calls me very early in the morning. He's like, where, what are you doing, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just getting ready to you know, go to work, or whatever. He's like, well, meet me over here. He's like, meet me in Long Beach or something. And I'm just like, what? I was like, I haven't even had a chance to like shower, get ready or whatever. I was all annoyed because it's my birthday. So I want to do my hair and makeup. He's like, just come, come on. So we go and we go and he takes me on this cool experience. So we cruised over to Catalina and just had an awesome time. So spontaneous, I mean, he's like the king of it. Um, next is I would say high standards. He's very much about high standards. Um, we're the best um, that we can be in anything that we do. Um, the other day we were having a conversation with Dylan and the question was, uh, hey, let, hey, no, he said, dad, can you play that song, the, my baseball walk-up song? And it's Nelly, I am number one. And I said, yeah, you like that song? I was like, mommy picked that song for you. And he goes, you picked that song for me, mom? I said, yeah, I picked that song. He said, well, why'd you pick that song for me? And I said, well, we're number one in everything that we do. Whatever we compete in, we're number one. So he's just like, okay, he smiles at me. So that's just the epitome of our family. We are and strive to be number one in everything that we do. Um, next, I would say um, he is uh, very much a protector, very much a protector. 
Um, he's the kind of person is that you do not want to cross him as it comes to his family. You do not say something bad to his family. You do not do anything bad to his family because if you do, you would not want to be there. I don't want to be there for that day. Um, his dad has always joked that if you hit Patrick with a stick, he's going to come and bring a, bat, a baseball bat to the fight. So that's just the kind of person that he is, and he's very, very loyal. Um, and I would say next is fun. Oh, my gosh. Pat is the most fun person I've ever met. He could be stand-up comedian if he wanted to. Um, he's so much about, like, jokes and pranks, and, you know, he's just a funny guy. He has such a great sense of humor. Um, I can just always think about moments where he's making the whole family laugh. I mean, I just think about a recent photo shoot that we took with the family. And one of the photos, we we're all just cracking up. And I'm just like, that is so much Patrick. He said something or did something that just made us all crack up. And um, that's, that's who he is. So that's Pat. And, uh, you know, he's a demanding person because he is, you know, he's a high functioning person you know so there's always something going on there's always something to do so like I need to level up so I can keep up right so it's a very much a demanding schedule but I definitely wouldn't trade that for anything in the world because I feel like we have such a blessed life together with him as you know the leader of our family he's an amazing dad he's an amazing husband I mean just he has it all, and I'm truly thankful that he's picked me as his wife to build that family with. So I wouldn't say, um, you know, I would definitely say I'm the luckiest person in the world. So how we raise the kids, uh, it's very much about, they have an earning mentality. We certainly teach that to them at a very young age. Um, you know, if there's something that they want or they want to get, we would we'll tell them, okay, well, in order for you to get that, you need to read that book. You know, like I remember, you know, a couple years ago, the kids were really into the Legos. So dad would buy the Lego and he wouldn't let them open it. He would just like put it up on the shelf and he'd be like, okay, kids, you want that Lego, you need to finish that book, right? And even with our younger daughter, we do the same thing with her. Um, she's five years old and so she's learning handwriting. So we tell her, you know, okay, in order for you to play iPad on the weekend, you have to write your ABCs 10 times. She's like, 10 times, can we do eight? You know, she's very much about negotiating. So, I mean, there's always that mentality of them earning something. You know, if you want something in life, you have to work for it, right? And I think those are kind of principles that are gonna help them out later on in their life because they know that something's not gonna be easy. If you want something, you gotta work for it, right? So those are the principles and the standards that we teach them from a very young age, so they understand that. It's very important, because one day they're gonna be in the real world. And in the real world, you gotta work for something. It's nothing comes to you for free. So we're very much about, you know, high standards and discipline in our house. <laughs> How do I balance being a mom, having kids, running a business, helping my husband, all that good stuff? Uh, I would say definitely having the right support team around me is very, very important. Um, I would have never been able to do the things that I've been able to accomplish or do in the business without having a support team. One, um, I have a nanny that helps me with my kids. You know, she has been there since my son was eight months old. My first son was eight, uh, eight months. Um, and she really helps me take care of everything you know at the house with the kids take him to school she even helps me do grocery shopping um, she helps me get the kids dinner and things like that so if I didn't have her that's a big part of support that I needed to be able to handle things at home so I can you know fulfill the responsibilities that I have with the business so having that support team around me is very important also we have Patrick's dad he he lives with us so he's a very he's very good with the kids you know he'll sit with them and you know they'll watch tennis together or like with the baby for example he takes the baby on a stroll and she'll sleep and he just enjoys the time with her he's helping me but he, you know he's having a good time too um, and then there's the other important parts of this support network that you need to have and that's school and church for example I feel that school and church is such an important part of your community because they're they're in constant 
you know, communication and your kids are in school all day. So to having, you know, important people at school, the teachers that are in, in their lives, tutors, we have tutors for all of our kids and they're involved in all kinds of things um, at school, after school activities, coaches, things like that. So all of that is really a part of your community that's helping you raise your kids and helping you be that support team. You know, they've always said that it takes a village to raise a kid or raise a family, that, and that is very true. Things that people don't know about Patrick, um, maybe that Patrick loves movies. I mean, he is an avid movie watcher. I mean, he loves to watch movies and have popcorn and eat slushy. <laughs> That's his favorite thing to do. Um, I think for him, watching a movie is like therapy because it's like an opportunity for him to just relax and enjoy, you know, the moment and get into the story. And, you know, for him, that's just like a really place of comfort for him. And I, my kids have adapted that as well. Like they really love movie too, movies too. You know, a lot of times on Sunday, which is kind of like a family tradition for us is we watch a lot of movies on Sunday, you know, so he'll ask the kids, you know, what do you guys want to watch? You know, and then they take turns. Oh, it's my turn. It's my turn to pick the movie. So that's like a thing, you know, with with their family is, is the movies and the popcorn. So it's a big deal in our house. Tips for women who are married to maybe an A-type, you know, an entrepreneur, um, that also is a, a wife of um, a business owner, maybe they, there's kids. I would just say that there, there's always a way, you know, to, a way to be able to find a way to be involved. You know, uh, whether it be you're helping out in the office or you're, maybe you're putting together events at the house, you know, like for me, like I always felt I felt good about being in the know if I was involved because I felt like I'm like a part of my husband's life daily. You know, so I like to know what's going on. I like to be involved. We're gonna have so much fun doing it. So I'm glad you guys are here tonight. Thank you for being here and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the evening. So this summer we've got like all the kids lined up with all the sports camps and all that stuff, but we really feel like sports is something that really keeps your kids lined up and doing the right things because as they grow up and they get older, there's gonna be distractions for children. So we always felt that like sports is something to keep kids out of trouble, to keep them busy, to keep them occupied because then they don't have just idle time sitting around to go off and get in trouble. No, they're playing sports, um, they're learning, you know, you know, team camaraderie, they're learning discipline and uh, very important for their health. I mean, as they grow up and you know, they get stronger, like I look at my kids and I'm like, man, these kids got muscles. I mean, like, uh, uh, Tico and Dylan both, like their muscles are very, very built out for a child that, that is that young. And it's because they're always swimming or they're always playing something or they're always doing something. It's very important for them, you know, as they get older, you know, to guide them in the right way. You know, for, for me as a child, I played a lot of sports and sports helped me stay out of trouble. So definitely would recommend that for any parents is focusing on the sports or any kind of extracurricular activities that you can get your kids into. People look at me and they're like, you know, wow, she comes from such humble beginnings. And I can, I can relate to a lot of people that want to do, you know, big things with their life that maybe do, they don't have very much. You know, but that doesn't really matter. It's all about deter determination and attitude. Like, I feel like attitude is like the number one thing that you can have to go out and do something great with your life. And being an optimist, you know, like being an optimist is gonna take you, you know, a, a lot of places and you're gonna get very far with that, you know. And the faith that we've had, you know, all throughout all the things that we've ever done in our life, you know, there's been a lot of turmoil. There's been a lot of storms that we had to, you know, go through. But, you know, in the back of our mind, we were always like, you know what, it's always gonna work out. 
you know, whatever it is you're gonna go through, it eventually works out and it eventually becomes, you know, even better than what you thought it was gonna be.